Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's your boy Ricky Cadden back again with Real Life Trading Australia with another real life stock review. Today in the markets, uh, looking a little bit bearish out there actually. We did get a cute little evening star reversal pattern forming on the SPY and I did actually take try to take this thing bearish. So if I just take a look at the 15 minute I'll show you exactly how I played this. I actually lost one R on this trade, um, unfortunately, but if I just uh, take away these drawings, here we go. So what I, what I saw forming was this tweezer top on the 15 minute pattern. Okay, we both these two candles had a high of 377 cents. And then we had this cute little high wave candle and I wanted to take the breakdown of that candle. So as you can see, I took the breakdown of the high, the, of the high wave tweezer top and um, set my stop just above there, probably three cents higher. Probably could have had my stop maybe 10 cents higher. Would have been, it would have worked out perfectly then. However, I did get stopped out about uh, an hour later and, th and then obviously the stock did exactly what I thought was going to happen. This was a very high risk reward trade. As you can see, um, this was a nice little 5R potential gain. So, I mean, all in all, only lost one R. Happy I got out. I did, I could have played it a little bit better. Um, I could have also, you know, scaled into the trade and, um, oops, so I could have scaled into the trade and taken it lower and then had my stop a little bit higher. So, all in all, only losing one R on the day, but SPY on the overall markets looking a little bit bleak right now. So looking a little bit bearish. This is a evening star reversal pattern. Do I think this is going to be the top and we are just going to tumble? No, I personally don't think that's going to happen. If you take a look at the short term moving averages, we still have the 10 simple move, uh, the 10 EMA right there and we've got the 20 here and we have not yet pulled back into the 20. So if anything, I think most likely we will probably come down to the 10, retest, maybe come back up to the highs and then have another bit of a dip, you know, into the into the 20 EMA. And then I'll just kind of see how we play out. But overall, SPY having a little bit of a sell off, but um, yeah not looking too bad. Here's, here's the e-minis and this is what I originally saw the trade on. Uh, if you take a look at the hourly chart, we did start to create these lower highs, a little bit of resistance here, which is the reason why I took that trade on the ES, oh, oh, sorry, on the SPY. Here's the Dow Jones. Uh, so the Dow Jones on the daily, uh, looking pretty cute, really. Uh, we have got a nice little high wave high wave candle here with pretty small volume. Um, this will be a very interesting candle to play. Personally, I think we will gap down uh, on Wednesday and maybe trade back down to close this gap from three days ago and then trade back down to the 10 and most likely bounce from there. So keep your eyes on a short term bearish move on the overall markets on the SPY and the Dow Jones. Um, but long term, be bullish. Here's Square. Uh, a lot of people expecting this pullback to happen. We did have quite a large run last week in particular. We did run up over 11% just last week. So this was running into this resistance level at 81.25. And uh, we are currently in a one, two, three, four. We are in the wave four. So Personally, I think this will just chop around here sideways, maybe catch a little bit more of support as these moving averages come in. Um, but then from there, I do think we do get one more push higher. Here's Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX. Now, we do have earnings right around the corner. We are getting Netflix earnings this week and it will be one to watch. We have got a solid resistance here at 382.35. And if we do gap above these levels, 
be bullish, guys. It will be a very nice bullish play. On the other end of the scale, if we gap down to these lows, okay, it is a nice little support level and it will be a nice fadeable gap to take bullish. However, if we gap down below these lows, I'd probably just sit and wait. Um, it will be a long term, a good time to buy long term if you are a long term investor. But all in all, do love Netflix. I own, I own their products. I use their product. And um, yeah, look to buy the dip on Netflix if we do get a really nice dip buy opportunity. Um, here's Twitter. So a few of my coaching clients very happy this week that they got exercised or they sold out of their position. I did mention in my last review that the target on Twitter was uh, 3832 or 3833. This was the target to sell as this was a one, two, three, four, five. So I did talk about my last review that this will we'll probably get one more last push higher before we start to sell off and we did start to sell off last night. So a lot of people happy about getting exercised on Twitter. Very well done to all you fine folks. Here's MU and just another one. Very, very expected pullback to happen. We have got this uh, retest gap that ho has not yet been filled and I do expect it to be filled. Um, so this week, just keep your eyes on MU. If we do get a nice little dip, just uh, look to buy the dip. It will... MU does look to go higher. They are a very strong company. And um, yeah, be bullish on MU. Everything's looking great. Here's Under Armour. Symbol UAA. Take a look at the long-term moving averages. On the weekly chart, we are at the 200 simple moving average. However, on the daily, we are getting pretty extended away from the 100. So this would be, this actually, this trend actually looks quite nice. If you take a look at the monthly chart, we have formed this beautiful double bottom pattern um, and we have broke out above the neckline. So if you are looking to buy the dip on UAA as a long-term investment, um, being with this being a, a monthly chart, Probably look to buy the dip back off the 100 simple moving average around $24. Uh, that definitely would be a nice dip buying opportunity. But short term, um, we are at resistance levels here. Uh, we could create a potential double top. And then obviously on the weekly chart, we are at the 200. So just if you're looking at getting in, now's not the time. However, just look to buy the dip probably off this uh, this nice little uh, re resistance level back here on the weekly chart at $24. And here's the gap of the day that I missed and absolutely spew and I missed it. But however, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Blue Apron gapped up, was a beautiful gap and go. Have a look at the daily on massive volume. Beautiful, beautiful gap. If you take a look at the five minute, uh, very, there was a lot of, opportunities to take this thing bullish bullish if you take a look at the the 10 ema and the vwap um we did have this nice cute little pennant pattern here in the first 10 minutes of the day and then we did break out retest the vwap and then broke out again retested the 10 and the vwap and then obviously shot higher when this uh when this hammer candle came in this could have been your entry and a stop below here and it would have been an absolute home run um, however i would love to have said i would love to have said that i did take that trade however um, i didn't but there was a lot of talk about it in the morning room and i'm pretty sure a few of the real life traders did take it so if you did get to take blue apron well done here's barber ticker symbol b a b a interesting news about barber uh, well, first of all, we are at the 100 simple moving average on the daily. However, they have had a, uh, sorry, there, there, there has been a, there has been talk about being a stock split on Barba from for one to eight shares. So if we were to split right now, just to put it in perspective, um, you know, if we were to split Barba into eight shares right now at 174, it would be roughly about 
it would be taken back down to about a twenty dollar stock. However, just just be be cautious. Usually, stocks do sell off straight after a stock split. Um, so if you're looking to buy Barber straight after the stock split, probably wait for the selling to occur and then look to buy long term. If you look at the weekly chart, I mean, this is a very high growth company. Great, great stock. Basically, the Amazon of of China. And um, yeah, we are currently at the 100 simple moving average on the weekly chart. So I probably expect a little bit of selling, especially with the way the markets are right now. We have been pretty extended, but this is a gorgeous double bottom. Um, so maybe just look to buy the dip on the daily. We are also at the 100. And yeah, obviously on the monthly chart, we still haven't printed any long-term long-term long -term moving averages but we have got this glorious glorious hammer forming so right now fairly neutral but short-term bearish uh long-term bullish on this company let's take a look at the all lords xao if you take a look at the daily chart we are finding some support here at the 20 ema um I did say back here that most likely we'll chop around sideways for a little bit and then most likely create some new all-time highs. Uh, we have not yet created new all-time highs yet. I'm super excited to find, to see when that does occur. Um, but there might still be a little bit more dippage happening. Um, maybe pull back into the 50 or just chop around sideways and let the 50 EMA, uh, you know, come back into support. So, the All Lords, probably fairly neutral, but bullish overall. Here's Afterpay, ticker symbol APT. And for those of you who are looking at buying, um, I have been mentioning back here that wait for it to come back down to the simple moving, uh, the 100 simple moving average. And today we have got a nice little bullish candle straight off the 100. Not a surprise at all. We are at a support level right here. Um, does not mean that we cannot come lower, but uh, obviously mitigate your risks accordingly. And um, if you are looking to buy long term, this is a fairly decent price to get in on Afterpay. Here's, here's JB Hi-Fi. And I have been mentioning this bullish trend may be starting to slow down. We are getting a little bit of a little bit of gappage happening and <laughs> and uh, obviously fade, fading as well. We are struggling to get above the $29 level. So if you did take JB Hi-Fi bullish off this, off this dip back here, um, then well done to you. Uh, but I would definitely be looking to lock in some gains, especially because we are coming into this, you know, resistance level right here. So, well done on JB, JB Hi-Fi if you got to take that bullish. Here's CBA and CBA not doing that much at all. We are just chopping around sideways, which, like, which we expected. So if you are in long-term shares, just look to sell some covered calls, sell some premium, get some income and um, yeah, be, be long-term bullish to neutral on CBA. Here's Kogan. Have not spoke about Kogan for a while. My drawing is still here from, from my last review. Uh, if I take a look at the weekly chart, this was exactly what I expected on this day right here. I, I drew this line and Mr. Squiggles putting in some work. It uh, is following my line absolutely perfectly. So if you have been following Kogan and following this particular trade setup, then well done if you did get in long right here. Me personally, I didn't, um, but this is what I did expect to, to occur as this was a neckline and a double bottom retest. So uh, well done to you if you did get to take Kogan bullish and right now still looks great long term. Let's take a look at some commodities. Here's US oil or crude oil. Uh, take a look at the daily chart. Uh, we are, I am fairly neutral at the moment. I don't see any major setups on oil at this current point in time. I would just look to buy low, sell high being that being, you know, look to buy at around 56 and sell above, sell above $60. Um, if you take a look at the weekly chart, we are 
battling against the 100 simple moving average and we are currently between the 100 and the 200 so obviously just look to buy as low as possible if we do get a dip back down to the 200 simple moving average on the weekly that will be a buyable opportunity and i'll definitely be looking to go long um here's gold and gold is forming a very cute pennant pattern right now as we speak so we are creating some higher uh, some higher lows and some lower highs so whichever way this does break um, I think it's going to be a nice quick little move um, if we do break above if we do break these highs and close above the highs of this little pennant pattern I do expect us to have another quick little bullish run probably to about 1438 or 1440, which was these highs, um, that a lot of people will be selling there as it is a resistance level from back here in 2013. So uh, there, it will be a, it will be a price that is going to be, you know, it will be a struggle to get struggle to get above. But once we do break these highs, I am bullish on gold, guys. I do expect gold to go higher long term. Look to buy the dip. Um, any short-term pullbacks, uh, just any any short-term pullbacks, just look to buy the dip. If we do get a, if we do break this bottom part of the wedge and come back down, this will be a very very nice time to buy and go long on gold. So definitely keep it on your radar. Um, here's the Aussie dollar. So I got into a short last night um, on the Aussie dollar at seventy. 28 um 70.28 cents and i do have a stop way up here um at 70.81 i have done that because i am i am expecting to leg into this trade and so i am i am expecting to scale into this trade and increase my position size first target 1r with my current position size is um 69 76 for one R. However, once I reach that one R target, I will be increasing my position size and lowering my break even, uh, lowering my stop to break even, um, and hopefully capitalizing at this two R target. So AUD USD looking very nice for a quick little short position. Um, but yeah, well done to all of you who did take this thing bearish with me last week. GBP AUD. Now I have been speaking about this since this day right here that most likely we will get a short little rise and then a little roll over. So if you did get to capitalize on that, that little trade, me personally, I, I completely missed it after this candle here. I, did not see that candle. Um, I was not keeping an eye on things there, um, but it was a very, very nice setup. You could have taken this thing bearish with a break below and a stop above, and there would have been your two R target right there. So, GBP AUD, we have had a we have had a few bearish days in a row. So, me personally, I am actually looking for this to trade higher, and then I'll look for a nice little reversal pattern to take this thing back down to about one seventy four. Um, but GBP AUD, if you're in short, well done. Uh, look to take profits or keep holding or pass this retest and take it lower. Uh, that's all I got for you today, guys. Um, next week, if you have not registered, pop on over to reallifetrading.com. We do have the free trading week where you can trade alongside the team at Real Life Trading for free for a whole week, and you'll get access to the day trading room and the swing trading room. Amazing value, super awesome content. You know this guy right here, always bringing the best on the whole wide on the whole wide world web of stock trading and just pure knowledge and greatness. This this guy right here, and he's going to be rocking out the room. You guys want to be learning from this guy? Be there next week, and um, I. I'm super pumped to see you all there. So I'll be back on Thursday with another real life stock review. And until then, love life, live life and trade it. Bye.